I'm gonna just create something here to support this table. So we have this A12, we have A12 here. So we'll do something like name, Joe Smith. So let's go back here and create a join statement in our SQL. So we'll do select star from, well, the first question mark is gonna refer to this first table. And I'm gonna do left join the second table, the second question mark. I'm gonna need some aliases here for this table. So I'm gonna do SL for my left table and SR for my right table and do an on statement and do on L dot A equals to R dot A. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and see what happens. Good, so we got it joined. So we got one, see, we got Joe. We got one, that's Joe again, and two is Smith. Great. So as I was browsing the web, I found this library, all uh, SQL, I guess, that's what it's called. And it's a JavaScript library that is helping you work with data using regular SQL type of language. And what caught my attention about this is that it allows you to also have JavaScript arrays as your source data, and you can actually use a select statement right over that JavaScript array. I thought I would try to implement this library in our spreadsheet. I didn't write this library, so all the credit goes to the team who wrote this library. So I haven't tested this. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Hopefully it will, but I decided I'm just gonna make a video out of it. And if it works out, great, I'll just post it. Let's rename this. All right, so I named this project, whatever it is. I'm gonna go ahead and create another script to have all the code from the library. I'm gonna remove everything in this part, go back to their GitHub, go to their dist section here and find this SQL.js file right here. Open that one. Click on this row to get just the JavaScript. Select all, control A, command A should do that. Go back here and paste that entire code. Here we go, that's the whole code. I'm just gonna add a comment above this to the GitHub page, to the main. Now this code was not created for Google Sheets, it was created for uh, most likely Node.js and the browser from what I can tell. Now let's try to test and see if it even works. So I'm gonna go to this code.js and try to now use that library to see if we get any output. And if we do get some output, then we might be able to work with this. So I'm gonna go back here, let's scroll down and find some example code. I'm gonna skip this because I don't care about creating tables or adding lines or any of that stuff. This is the part that I find more interesting. So I'm gonna just copy that, paste it right here. And let's just try to console lock those results to see if we get anything. If this works, it should basically be the results of this select statement, let's see. So I'll go ahead and run this, check the log. So that actually returned what we need. Great, so the library actually worked out in Google Sheets environment, which is something I was a little worried about. Now to make this work with actual data, we're gonna put in our spreadsheets, we need to convert our data to the shape. And for them, their data is array of objects. Basically this would be the column name A and B, and this would be the data. And then each row is another column name and the data next to it. So if we have some data, let's say in our spreadsheet, if I was trying to recreate this in our spreadsheet, that would be, see, A, B, those would be the columns, and it would be 110, so something like this, 110. 
something like this. So these would be our column names and this is our data. Now that being said, when I get this data from a spreadsheet in Google Sheets, it's gonna be an array of arrays. So let's just do that really quickly here so we can see what we're gonna get. So I'm gonna do let that equal to I'll go with the string notation right now. It was from A1 through B4. And we'll do get values to just get that to an array. So right now, if I just log this, So see, this is what we get. We get an array of arrays. So we got the first row, which has A and B, and then the second row, 110. So this is the way we get our data, but we want our data. Let me just copy this to add as a comment so we can see an example of that, but we need it to be like this. So to do that, we're gonna take that array and this first row in this array that we get is gonna be our headers. So if we take our array and just pop, actually not pop, pop is the last row, let's do shift. Shift drops the first element in array. The first element is gonna be this first array of column names. So what's gonna happen then, this headers is gonna become this first array and then it's gonna keep the rest of this, which is the actual data. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna at this point loop through this array and create a new array out of it. So let's just take that array and I'm gonna map through that array so that we'll loop through it. And we'll do a callback in this. So we'll do for each row in this array. So every time it's gonna run through one of these rows. So the remaining rows are gonna be this, this, and this. And what we need to happen, we need to basically return something that looks like this. So I'm gonna do something like create an object here. The way I'm gonna populate that object, I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go with the values mapping way. So I'll take the R, which is gonna be this row that comes out of it. And I'm gonna loop through all the values in that row. and pass a callback function. So this for each is now gonna accept two arguments. The first argument is gonna be the actual value in the cell, cell, and the second is gonna be i, which is gonna be the actual index. So it's gonna go zero, one, two, three. We'll do an arrow function here. And what we'll do, we'll take that object we just defined on top and we have to basically just set the first column, which is gonna be that A, and we'll be able to get to it by using the headers and pass the I to it, the position. So the first one out of those headers will be the A, then the second one will be B, and we'll get to that using this position I. So we'll set that equal to the value of the cell. And with that, we just gonna return that object. So when we return that object, hopefully that will be this, and that's gonna be living in a new array here, which is gonna be this. Now let's try to test this and see if this logic actually works out. I'm gonna take this and try to log this out. So it says cannot set property A of undefined. So first of all, this would be an object. So let's check again and see what we got. Okay, A1, B10, A2, B20, A1, B20, which is, I think that's exactly what we need. Now let's go and try to add something to this. Let's go back and run this. So this is not accurate, we, oh, uh, this range. So it should be from A1 through C5 now. Let's try this one more time. Hopefully this time it works. So here it is, we have three columns 
of data now and it's an array of objects, which is exactly what we need to provide this. Okay, good. I'm gonna actually go back and remove this stuff for now. Okay, so finally, assuming that we got what we got, I'm gonna just call this data at this point now. It's already been declared, which is this. We don't wanna keep this anymore. Now, assuming this whole thing worked out, this should run and we should get results out of this now with this SQL statement. So let's just do something that makes sense to us. Let's just do select star from that data table. So I'm gonna run this and see what we get. A1, B1, I don't know what this colon is. Oh, that's because we have this extra blanks. Okay, this should be now A1 through B4. Same mistake twice, so how is that possible? So, so far so good, I think that works out. Now the next thing we have to do, we have to also create something to do the opposite of what I just did here. So here we take this array from Google Sheets and convert it to this array of objects. Now what we need to do to then write the data back to the spreadsheet, we need to now take this array of objects, which is gonna be this results, and convert it to an array of arrays. So, let me just copy paste an example of what it is actually. So this is what it's gonna be. Now we want to convert that to this. So to do that, we'll, well, let's just do this. Let's go back here. Well, we'll have to loop through that array again. So we're gonna do res.map. This will be getting one of these elements. So I'll just call it R for row. And what do we need to return? Well, I guess for all the other rows, we just need to return these two values. All right, so let's think about it. So this R is gonna be this object. So if we take the keys out of that, that will give us A, B as an array. So if we loop through that, we'll call it a key, we'll want to return the R at that key. I think I got that right. So let's just return that and see what that looks like. So let's create a variable here and try to log this out. One ten to twenty. One twenty. So yes. So we probably need the headers in the beginning, though, which we don't have in this. Back to this. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna turn this back to a one-liner, just to simplify this. So we'll just return this, and to this we need to add one row to the beginning. So we can do that by doing shift, actually on shift. And that should just be A and B. And we should be able to get to that by doing something very similar, but there's no R here. So we need to take this, get the first row out of it and get the keys. Let me just run this. That is not correct. Oh, unshift modifies the actual res. So that would not work here. So, okay, I'm gonna have to do this as a separate step here. That will be the new res. And then we'll take the new res and unshift this. Seems that way. So A, B, 120, 220, 120. Okay. We were able to do the steps. Convert it to array of objects and then convert it back to an array of arrays. That's good.
So now finally, I'm gonna try to convert this entire thing to a Google Sheets function by going on top here and call this super SQL. And now this is just not gonna be here. We'll just pass the first argument here. Maybe I should have picked a different name for this variable. I'll deal with that later, comma. And then the second one is gonna be the SQL statement. So I'll do SQL and that's gonna be this part. So we're gonna pass the array and that SQL statement and we want to return this. All right, so let's test this and see what happens. So the function is called now super SQL. So I go here, do equal sign super SQL, open parentheses, select the data, comma, and pass that SQL statement as a string. So in quotes to this, and let's see what happens. So that returned this. Now let's go and change this. So let's do where B is greater than 15. That worked out, so we filtered that to everything greater than 15. That's good. Now, I wanna see what happens if I make changes to this. Does this automatically update or not? So I'm a little worried about that. Let's go and change this to 12. Yes, great. So we're able to work with this data using this SQL statement now, and we're calling this super SQL. So let me first just clean this up now. Probably gonna rename this, I'll call this data as array instead of this. And we'll call this SQL as text or string. And I'll put that in here. Now that's good. Now the thing that I'm more interested in is passing more tables to this because by passing more tables, we should be able to do joins and things like that. So if we have like comma separated list of arrays here, that will let us work in our SQL statement. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change the order of this. I'm gonna do SQL string first, and then I'm gonna pass the data next. Let's not get too fancy for now. Let's just do something like this. Data as array one and data as array two assuming we'll have two of them. I think what I have to do, I have to move this to its own function so we can quickly convert our data to an array. So let's do that. So basically I'm just gonna move all this code here and then I'm just gonna just return this data, but we don't have to call it anything. So this should be this, this should be that. I think that should work. So now we should be able to use this in here to convert that to an array like this, which means we can also do this. So we should have two of them. But right now I just wanna test to make sure like this first part is still working out. Now we did change the order of this. So should be string first then array second. Cannot read property shift off undefined. That's probably this one that's giving us the error. So let's just comment that for a second here. Yep. So that works, that's good. Now, we want this to go here as an array. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna create a variable here and that's gonna be an array. And we'll just basically push to that SQL data array, all of these arrays. So I'm gonna do that dot push and then if we pass this over here, that should be now the same thing, but this will give us a little more flexibility. So let's save this. 
Data is not defined. All right, let's see. How is that not defined? Okay, let's just test something here. Okay, so let's try this one more time. So if this was like this, does that work? Yes. Interesting. Okay, and if I do this, now, if we do a second array, what happens? Well, we should probably, first of all, pass another array for this not to be an error. So let's just do this. Okay, so that worked still. Now, before I go too crazy about this, I want to test to do a join with two tables to see what happens, which was probably one of the most important reasons why I got into doing this to begin with. So I'm going to just create something here to support this table. So we have this A12, we have A12 here. So we'll do something like name, Joe, Smith. So let's go back here and create a join statement in our SQL. So we'll do select star from, well, the first question mark is going to refer to this first table. And I'm going to do left join the second table, the second question mark. I'm going to need some aliases here for this table. So I'm going to do SL for my left table and SR for my right table and do an on statement and do on l dot a equals to r dot a so if you know sql you will probably know what i'm doing right now if you don't that should be a separate class so i'm gonna go ahead and hit enter and see what happens good so we got it joined so we got one see we get joe we got one that's joe again and two is smith great now, we could have done this with a VLOOKUP, but what if we have more than one match? So this is where join is going to do some weird things for us. So if we do another one here and do Linda, now let's go and add this to our array. So I'm going to go B11. And that seems to work just great. So let's just add a couple of other things here really quickly. All right, let me add this new column to our second table. And now we got the phone numbers combined as well. So the join works just fine in this particular case. And that was a left join and we should be able to do other type of joins as well. Now, what if there is no match? Let's change this to three. So it just returns blanks. That's good. So that's our nulls pretty much. And I'm curious if there's a full join support here too. So it doesn't seem that way. So full join is not supported. There's probably left, right, and just inner join. So, so there it is, right join works. Uh, why do we get trues? So that looks a little weird. So going back to the conversion, it seems like it didn't just go with the names of the columns in the right way in here, something to go back and address because these columns are not in the right place and there are these weird truths. We have to look at it and see what's going on with that. But I'm gonna go back to left join for a second here and also just try to select some columns instead of all columns. So I'll do L dot A, L dot B, R dot name. All right, so that works. So there are some things that needs to be polished, but basically overall we got something already working. 
So that gives us a starting point. I'm gonna end this on this video and I'm gonna continue on the next part to polish some things here and try to get this to a working function. So I'll see you in the next part.